On today's episode, the Chicago Blackhawks will be hosting the 2022 Tom Curver's Prospect Showcase in just a couple of weeks at Fifth Third Arena. I'll get into all the important details on that, and I'll also go over the new sweater numbers for each of the Blackhawks offseason signings, such as Andreas Athanasiu, Max Domi, and Peter Morazic. All that and plenty more right here on Locked On Blackhawks. <laughs> Your Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Blackhawks podcast, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Today is Wednesday, August 31st. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman 2 or you can also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And if you're listening to the audio version of today's episode and you like what you're hearing, then please be sure to go and show some support first by following the podcast, which will only take a quick couple of seconds, literally just a quick click of the button will be helping me out tremendously. Even if you're not listening to the show on a daily basis, I recommend you do so to stay up to date on all the latest Blackhawks news. But if you're not a day-to-day listener, still make sure you're getting those episodes downloaded because that would be helping the boy out tremendously and I would greatly appreciate it. Also, be sure to go and rate the show with five stars if you like what you're hearing today as well. And if you're tuning in through Apple Podcasts or through Spotify, then feel free to go and leave me a review. I always greatly appreciate getting some feedback from all you wonderful listeners out there. And the best part about it all is that it's 100% for free wherever you may be listening to your podcast, whether that's through Apple Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, etc. It's all going to be 100% for free. And if you go and follow the show right now, then you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. And if you're not already listening or watching, excuse me, the video version of today's episode, then you got to be sure to go and check out Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube because each and every episode moving forward, folks, is going to have a video uploaded to YouTube as well. So if you haven't done so yet, please help me out as well by subscribing to Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube. It really helps me out more than all of you know, and it takes just a quick second. Go and hit that subscribe button for me. I would greatly appreciate it. Go and smash the like button down below for me as well, and comment as to which prospect, which Blackhawks or Minnesota Wild prospect you're most excited to see participate in the 2022 Tom Curver's Prospect Showcase. And last, go and ring that bell, turn on the push notifications, and that way you can get notified when the episode gets uploaded to YouTube each and every day. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining me on another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one-stop shop for all things Chicago Blackhawks. And thank you all for making the show your first listen here to start off your day. To open things up this afternoon, I wanted to start by getting into all of the details on the 2022 Tom Curver's Prospect Showcase, which will be, as we know, between the Chicago Blackhawks and the Minnesota Wild up at Fifth Third Arena in Chicago this year. And dating back to the end of the regular season, it was May or June or or something around that time, uh, that's when we first heard wind of this a prospect showcase taking place in Chicago. We found out then that it was going to be between uh, Chicago and Minnesota, but we didn't know exactly when it was going to be taking place. We could assume sometime right around training camp in the fall, but now we know the official dates of everything and also when the two games between the Blackhawks and Wilds prospects will be held. So getting into all of that, officially the prospect showcase will be held From September 14th through 18th, as I already mentioned, this is going to be at Fifth Third Arena, and it will be free and open to the public. You can come and watch any of the practice sessions. You can also go down to Fifth Third Arena and watch both of those games. You can go up in the stands and watch them. You'll also be able to go right along the boards and get a close-up glimpse of the action. So it's a really cool experience. I always enjoy going down to Fifth Third Arena, whether it's just for Blackhawks practices or 
the uh, development camp that was held not all that long ago, which first time that was held since before COVID. Crazy how long it had been since uh, that that development camp took place. Uh, but every time I go there, it's really fun going and seeing all of the Blackhawks fans also interacting with some of the media and getting a good opportunity and getting some exposure, getting some looks at hopefully a lot of future members of the Chicago Blackhawks franchise. I mean, they're already technically members. They're part of the prospect pool, but hopefully they'll be stepping onto the scene uh, in a few years and making an impact for the NHL club. So I highly recommend if you're able to, even if it's just for, one practice or one of the games go on down there because it's a really cool venue. I really like how fifth third arena set up. It's really nice, uh, fairly easy to get to kind of um, not too far away from uh, Ogilvy down in the city. It's like two miles, a quick Uber. Or you can even walk it. I usually do, but I hope to see a lot of you Blackhawks fans down there because it's going to be a lot of fun and uh, a really good opportunity to see more of these young Blackhawks prospects. Uh, but officially, the three practices that are going to be held will be on Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So Wednesday, September 14th practice will be held from 12 to 2. And then on Thursday, the next day, uh, the practice will move down to 10 to 12. And that's also uh, the time slot that will be held on Saturday for practice. As for the games, Friday will be a nice 7 p.m. Central Time puck drop, which will be, you know, for everyone who's attending, it'll give give off that feeling of hockey season truly is closing in. I mean, uh, getting that late Friday night puck drop. I know I'm going to be super excited and uh, probably will even be having like butterflies in my stomach knowing that hockey season is literally so close and uh you know going down to Chicago for a 7 p.m puck drop it, it feels like the real thing so I, I know that will uh be something I'll be super stoked doing and even just traveling down to Chicago that night will have me super amped and then for Sunday which will be the final day of this prospect showcase the second game between the Blackhawks and the Wilds prospects that will kick off at 1 p.m central time and unfortunately football season the NFL will be back at that point so might have to miss some of the some of your NFL Sunday if you do want to attend that game but um there's plenty of other opportunities to go throughout the week and as I already mentioned there's going to be a fun game held on Friday night so that's kind of the layout of how the 2022 Tom Curver showcase prospect showcase is going to go super excited for it and I also think it's going to be a good opportunity for the Blackhawks prospect pool as a whole. And something I referenced recently on the show was Corey Pronman's prospect pool rankings that he dropped about a week or two ago, where he rated all 32 NHL clubs prospect pools and released a little bit of a write-up on each of them. And I talked on this show about how the Blackhawks impressively moved up from 22nd last year to 13th this year, while the Minnesota Wild were given the eighth spot by Corey Pronman in his prospect pool rankings. And that's one thing the Wild, even though it's been, I mentioned this with uh, Seth Topal, host of Lockdown Wild. I just had a crossover with him. If you haven't checked that out, go and click on the channel. It's literally the last episode that I uploaded. Um, but I mentioned this with Minnesota. They didn't really have the most active offseason. And Part of that is because they have a lot of money tied up to Zach Parise and Ryan Suter and the buyouts. Uh, but one thing that is going to be beneficial for Minnesota is they do have a good group of young players going to be coming up in the next few seasons. Guys such as, uh, well, Matt Boldy has already stepped onto the scene, and I highly doubt we're going to see him at this prospect showcase. But there's also Jesper Wallstead, who was someone that, if the Blackhawks kept their first round pick in last year's, two years ago's NHL draft, the 2021 NHL draft, he was someone I, I really thought they could have made a, a move for. By far the best goaltender prospect in my mind of that draft, even though he got selected after Sebastian Casa from the Edmonton Oil Kings. He'll probably be in attendance if I had to guess. Uh, there's also Marco Rossi, who has had a lot of battles since uh, getting COVID and 
it's been remarkable just that he's even going to be back on the ice. So it, it'll be good exposure at Marco Rossi. Brock Faber will be there too. Um, I don't know if Kalen Addison's going to be there. He's already 22. So I, I doubt it, but Minnesota does have a pretty strong prospect pool. And I think uh, it would be big for the Blackhawks in their prospects if they're able to match that intensity and maybe even get the better of Minnesota in a game or two. I think that would be a nice Nice boost of confidence knowing that this future group really could have an impact and that this rebuilding plan that is currently in place with Kyle Davidson at the helm, the patient approach, there could be something to it. Now, I know it's just a prospect showcase and it's not going to be the tell all, but I think it would be nice, especially as a Blackhawks fan. I don't know if it's going to impact the locker room or the future prospects too much, but as a Blackhawks fan, if this group of prospects could go up against Minnesota's deep group and get the better of them once or maybe even twice. I think that would certainly be comforting to see and maybe ease a little bit of the Blackhawks fans' minds knowing that, hey, there could be some hope. There could be a light at the end of the tunnel here. So I'm really excited for this Tom Curver's prospect showcase for multiple different reasons. And uh, we are now just a few weeks away, folks. All right, that takes care of the schedule for the uh, 2022 Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase that will be held at Fifth Third Arena. Coming up in just a minute, I will get into the sweater numbers that each new Blackhawks player will be rocking for this upcoming season. Stick around to find out. But first, I got to talk to you all about Bet Online. Bet Online is both the fastest and the easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. You can also find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, the NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. That online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, total scores, over-unders. They even have podcasts. They have you covered on everything. So head on over to Bet Online today, or you can also use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet Online, where the game begins. Back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, segment two today, I wanted to be sure to also get into the sweater numbers that the new members of the Chicago Blackhawks will be wearing this year. And look, this is the epitome of hockey in August. I know it's the last day of August here, which is kind of crazy that summer is already wrapping up and, you know, September, I think everyone gets fall vibes once the calendar flips to that month. So, you know, that's signifies the start of hockey season. NFL is right around the corner, folks. We're just over a week away. Basketball for all you NBA fans is is slowly starting to creep up as well. Man, it's it's crazy how fast the summer has gone by, at least in my opinion. But uh, yeah, kind of the epitome of August hockey news here. Uh, not a whole lot to talk about today, but I thought it would be cool to go over the new sweater numbers for uh, each of the Blackhawks signings that they made this off season and also kind of diving into the history of those numbers and uh, the last guys who rocked that sweater and kind of uh, when, when going through this and doing some prep work for today's show, I had a, a good laugh or two seeing a couple of guys names. I was like, Oh my God, I completely forgot he was part of the team. Seems like throughout the past five, six, seven years, it's just been a revolving door for the Blackhawks for the most part. And there's so many guys that you can easily forget about because their stints were only like two or three, four months long. And you just completely throw them in the back of your mind. So uh, yeah, I had some fun doing some prep work for this segment on today's show, and I hope you all enjoy it as well. Uh, so yes, last week, the Blackhawks via their Instagram page posted a cool picture of the, the dressing room and uh, the sweaters that were hanging up revealed each of their offseason signings numbers. So now we know officially what each of these guys are going to be rocking. First, we have Max Domi, who, of course, inked a one-year, $3 million deal with the Blackhawks, more than likely going to be dealt at the trade deadline, but could be an enticing signing. I I've talked about this many times when mentioning Domi and 
why the Blackhawks elected to sign him. I just feel like he's one of those guys that provides a postseason type of game. Scrappy, can kind of slot anywhere up and down the lineup. He, he's more of a bottom six guy now because his offense has certainly dropped off a little bit, but he still is able to flash every now and then. And we saw it in the postseason for the Carolina Hurricanes too. Um, but I feel like Domi's one of those guys, especially on this cheap one year, $3 million deal. I feel like a, a team who's trying to get more scrappy or gritty or just trying to build their forward group a little bit more. I feel like a guy like Max Domi is always going to be enticing for at least a few teams come deadline time. So I, I really did like this signing as much as I don't like Max Domi and um, that the, the way that he plays from time to time. He's one of those guys where if you're facing him, you're going to hate him. But if he's in your locker room, you're probably going to absolutely love him. So uh, yeah, that that's basically the gist of, of the Max Domi signing. Um, interesting to see, you know, he had that kind of a little beef with Connor Murphy a few years back, but that seemed to be squashed immediately. There was even a video of those two kind of just like dapping each other up. And I think Domi even mentioned that they're like buddies. So nothing, nothing too big there. But anyways, getting into the good stuff, uh, Domi will officially be wearing number 13 for the Chicago Blackhawks this year, which was, of course, last worn by uh, Henrik Borgstrom this past season, which what a nightmare that turned out to be. Borgstrom was just a ghost. I mean... It's funny, Mark Lazarus from The Athletic, he's like, is there, this tweet was amazing, he said, has there ever been more of a guy than Henrik Borgstrom? He's he's just a guy. I mean, he literally was just a lineup placeholder, didn't do anything throughout the course of the season. I mean, absent 90% of the games he was in, and it was sad because he was someone I, I really was hoping they'd be able to kind of find their groove again in Chicago. He had a decent rookie year a few years back with the Florida Panthers. Kind of didn't work out after that. He went overseas, but uh, just his game never returned to form. So yeah, certainly disappointing year for Henrik Borgstrom. That's why he's no longer around. Uh, but 13 also was worn by Matthias Janmark, who is someone I just mentioned. Oh yeah, Matthias Janmark was a Chicago Blackhawk. Got dealt to the Vegas Golden Knights. I forgot that he wore 13 and randomly had that first half of the season where he was just potting goals left and right, even though his Corsi percentage was like the worst in the entire NHL. Uh, Denmark had a good first half and the Blackhawks kind of capitalized on that deal. Uh, another number 13, someone I was a little partial to when he was here was Tomas Yurko, because I, I really felt like Yurko is kind of similar to Brennan Perlini. I felt like Yurko was someone who, if the Blackhawks had given him a legitimate opportunity, and even when they did in few stints when he was around, I thought he flashed some success, but obviously, you know, he hasn't stuck around in the NHL too much, so I was probably completely wrong on that front, but Thomas Yurko's another one, and I was like, oh yeah, I kind of forgot about Tomas Yurko. Uh, and then also Daniel Carcillo, Stanley Cup champion for the Blackhawks, rock number 13 as well. Um, probably a, a number 13 that comes to more people's minds than some of the guys that I just referenced. But yes, Max Stomi will officially be wearing number 13 for the Chicago Blackhawks this season. Next, we have Alex Stalock, who signed a one-year $750,000 deal to serve as the backup this year. And that signing signified the Blackhawks are going to be very patient with Arvid Soderblom. There were some whispers that he could potentially have been the backup going into next season, but uh, ultimately the Blackhawks, their front office, know there, there is no rush for anyone right now. They're going to be very patient with this approach, and I do believe that's ultimately the right decision. The team is not going to be competing, and look, Arvid Soderblom is going to be the guy for the Rockford Ice Hogs, assuming that he remains healthy, knock on wood. It's going to be a really big opportunity for him to try to lead that young team back to the playoffs and build upon the strong rookie campaign that he had last year. So I still think it's a, a really good spot for Arvid Soderblom to be in. And Alex Daylock is obviously just a placeholder as the backup until he's ready to step onto the scene more. Uh, but Staylock officially will wear number 32 for the Blackhawks, which was just worn by now former netminder, former Hawks netminder, Kevin Lankinen, who's going to be the backup for the Nashville Predators this season behind UC Saros. Uh, I was kind of a little bit surprised that the Blackhawks elected not to bring back Lankinen. It seemed like a good spot for him to be in. It seemed like a good 
guy for the team to have also as a little bit of a filler and maybe give him another opportunity to showcase his stuff while the team around him obviously is also trying to fit together some pieces of the puzzle. So I I was a little surprised that Lankinen didn't ink an extension with the Hawks, but I also wasn't completely stunned that he didn't because uh, the second half of the year was not very good for him whatsoever. And once Marc-Andre Fleury departed, Lank's just did, had no consistency, did not look anything like the guy that he was from the first half of the COVID shortened 2021 season where he was kind of in the Calder Trophy conversation for a little bit. Um, but yeah, Alex Taylock now officially will be tank, taking his numbers. So there still will be a 32 in net for the Blackhawks this year. It's just not going to be Kevin Lankin in. Uh, some other number 32s in recent years, our boy Rosie. What a win, Rosie. One of the best Joel Quenville clips of all time. I know Joel Quenville's canceled, understandably so. Um, But that clip is awesome. Holy, what a win, Rosie. One of my favorites. But yes, Michael Roosevelt, if you remember correctly, rocked number 32. Uh, One of my favorite Michael Roosevelt moments, and I apologize here, Rosie, because this is a little bit disrespectful, but uh, it was 20, was it 2015 or 2013, man? Now my memory's blending together. I think it was 2015, but Roosevelt ankle picked and absolutely looked like he snapped his ankle or broke his foot or something. And at that point he was kind of a liability in the playoffs for the Blackhawks. And I remember sitting around with all my buddies and we were like, not saying it's a good thing that Roosevelt got injured, but might be a good thing that Roosevelt got injured. (laughs) I felt really bad about saying that, but it was kind of true at the time. Uh, But Two-time Stanley Cup champion, Michael Roosevelt, last war number 32 for the Blackhawks prior to Kevin Lankinen. We also saw John Scott, the big old goon, rock number 32 for a little bit. And I also forgot that Chris Versteeg wore 32 for the Blackhawks. He was 23, he was 32. I forgot about that little switch when he came back. Also interesting, two NHL head coaches in Bruce Cassidy and Bruce Boudreaux wore number 32 for the Chicago Blackhawks back in their playing days, which I did not know. Uh, But now Alex Stalock will carry that over and be the next 32 for the Blackhawks. And who he will be backing up is Peter Mrazek, who the Blackhawks acquired uh, during the first day of the NHL draft from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Mrazek still has two years left on his current deal with a $3.8 million cap hit. And after the way that he played last season, which was not good whatsoever, a lot of Blackhawks fans felt like Kyle Davidson did Kyle Dubas a favor by taking on this deal and not getting as much that he much as he could have. But the Blackhawks ultimately got to go back into the first round for a third time and wound up taking Sam Renzel, who I think kind of perfectly fits what they're trying to do right now. He's still years away from even turning professional. He's not even going to be playing college hockey until not this year, but the following season. But he's someone that they can stash away, a big body, right-handed defenseman who can skate, not a whole lot of those in the NHL, and just kind of put him to the side and let him continue to grow and grow and grow. So uh, I thought that was a good deal by the Blackhawks, but there are some people out there that disagree with me. Regardless, we know that Peter Morazic will be wearing number 34 for the Chicago Blackhawks, which was worn by Curtis Gabriel last. Now, did Gabriel wear 34? For the Hawks or for the Ice Hogs? That's what I can't remember. I honestly should have done some research on that before, but that's going to tie in later because I'm pretty sure he wore 79 for the Blackhawks, but we're going to get into that. Uh, Also, another guy who rocked number 34 for the Blackhawks who I completely forgot about was Carl Soderberg. Carl Soderberg was, was a member of the Blackhawks. Yes, forgot about that. He was a ghost for most of it, had a couple of good games before ultimately getting dealt, but another guy who... I forgot a little bit and certainly did not remember that he wore number 34. Um, Kevin Lankinen also wore 34 prior to switching to number 32. J.F. Berube was 34 prior to that. Remember J.F. Berube in that for a little bit. Uh, And also Dominic Hasek for one year rocked 34 for the Blackhawks. So it's been worn by a couple goaltenders before and is now getting passed along to starter Peter Mrazek. Um, I've just realized that I've kind of been running on going, going through these player names a little bit. So uh, I'm going to continue going through the last couple in just a moment, but uh, got to take a quick pause for our sponsors first. 
Welcome back to the Locked On Blackhawks podcast. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. Segment three, a carryover from segment two. I realized I was kind of running segment two a little long there, going into uh, sweater history uh, for the Chicago Blackhawks organization. But carrying over from where I left off, we got four more to get into. Uh, Colin Blackwell is next. He signed a two-year, $1.2 million, uh, well, the AAV average annual value is $1.2 million over the course of those two seasons. Kind of interesting that Domi and Andreas Athanasiu, who I will get into in just a moment, both of them signed one-year deals with the Hawks, but Blackwell signed a two-year deal. Not that it's, I don't think it's going to make it harder for the Blackhawks to trade him, which again, at his age and considering what the team's doing right now and the past moves that they've made, yeah, Colin Blackwell probably is going to get dealt at the deadline if the Hawks can get worth anything uh, of value in return. But it was just interesting to me that out of all the players that signed with the Blackhawks this offseason, it wasn't many, but Colin Blackwell was the only one that got a two-year deal. Interesting. Uh, But anyways, Blackwell will officially be wearing number 43 which was worn by Alex Vlasic last year. So we now know that Alex Vlasic will officially be changing numbers. That will be the next segment that I get into. Uh, But some other number 43s in Blackhawks history include Victor Svedberg. Does everybody remember Svedberg, the six foot seven defenseman? Uh, I remember him scoring a goal. I think trash is going on right now outside my house. I apologize if you folks are hearing that banging around. Nothing I can do about that. But Victor Svedberg, I remember him, uh, his first NHL goal, he went, top shelf uh i think it was against the detroit red wings if i'm correct somebody fact check me on that and go comment in the comment section whether i was right or not but i believe victor svedberg's first goal came on an absolute howitzer from the blue line against the detroit red wings but yes he wore number 43 a few years back uh another forgotten number 43 is brandon sod because when he first stepped onto the nhl yes he was number 43 but He eventually became an NHL regular and swapped to number 20. And 43, I don't think ever was a number that would fit Brandon Saad well. Just, I don't know. 43 feels a little more gritty than than skill. And Brandon Saad was a a top-line guy at that point. So 43 wouldn't have fit him very well, in my opinion. Uh, One other 43 that I wanted to be sure to mention is James Wisniewski. And the reason I mention this is because James Wisniewski is actually part of the start of my hockey fandom because the first game I ever went to, I think I've told this story on the show before, but I still remember it like it was yesterday, man. It was Patrick Kane's rookie year. So that would have been 2007, 2008, right? Cause their second year, 08, 09. Yeah. They lost in the conference final of the Red Wings. And then 2009, 10, they won the Stanley cup. Yes. So that would have been Patrick Kane's rookie year. It was my first Blackhawks game. My dad, my grandpa, they both played hockey growing up, so they were big hockey fans. But at that time, the hockey scene in Chicago was dead. I mean, the Blackhawks were the laughing stock of not only the NHL, but basically all of professional sports, especially being in a major city and having that type of attendance output night in and night out. I mean, it was it was really ugly. Um, so I didn't really grow up. I mean, I remember watching hockey when I was young, but I don't remember ever being into it certainly um not watching the blackhawks regularly or anything but my first game anyways was during that 2007 2008 season the blackhawks are playing the blues it's late i believe it was in march uh the blackhawks were kind of surprisingly making a push for the playoffs with all this young talent that they had patrick kane and jonathan taves they had patrick sharp um obviously keith and seabrook were there But yeah, I remember they were playing the St. Louis Blues and with like had to be a minute or a minute 30 left, St. Louis scored to take a one goal lead. Don't remember exactly what the score was, but the game was tied. St. Louis goes up by one with like a minute to go. And I was sitting down in the 100 level. Tickets were probably a quarter because nobody really cared. Well, maybe that at that time they cared because the team was actually becoming relevant again. But remember, I was down in the 100s right around center ice. And after St. Louis scored that goal, people were just flooding out of the United Center. I mean, everyone said it was over, all that good stuff. Nobody wanted to stick around. Everybody wanted to beat traffic. They were getting out of there. Everybody thought the Blackhawks had lost, and probably 20, 25 seconds later, good old number 43 at that time, James Wisniewski, scored to tie the game. And I remember people coming flooding back in, 
to go and watch overtime. And then in OT, the 18-year-old, might have been 19 at that time. Regardless, he was a rookie. Patrick Kane scores the OT winner and celebrates like right in front of me on the glass. And from that day, boom, I was hooked on to hockey. So number 43 at that time, James Wisniewski, a big part of my hockey fandom and what I'm doing today, because that's something that stuck with me forever and really made me fall in love with the game. And also Patrick Kane uh, has been my favorite player forever. My 13 year old dog is named Kane. So yeah, without James Wisniewski, I don't know if any of this would have been possible. So an interesting little note there for sure. Uh, but I mentioned Colin Blackwell will be wearing number 43 for this season. That was worn by Alex Vlasic last year. So we know Vlasic now will be changing his number. Probably had a conversation with Blackwell and being an older guy, probably like, yeah, take it. And Vlasic really never wore number 43 anywhere else. He always wore number seven for Boston University and for Team USA. And uh, I don't think he was going to be asking the Blackhawks to be wearing number seven. Now, Brent Seabrook. Brent Seabrook's sweater should be going up in the rafters and no one should be wearing number seven ever again. Don't think Vlasic even asked. He already knew the answer, especially being a Wilmette, Illinois native. He watched Seabs growing up. I don't think he was even going to ask anyone to have that number. Uh, but funny enough, Alex Vlasic, I, I don't want to say he chose another controversial number, but he, he certainly chose another interesting one because Alex Vlasic will be officially the third member in Chicago Blackhawks history to wear the number 72. And who do we all think of when we think of number 72 for the Chicago Blackhawks? Who could that be? All right. One of the best players in the NHL that they absolutely shouldn't trade it, shouldn't have traded, who had incredible chemistry with Patrick Kane. I'm talking about Artemi Panarin, the bread man, obviously. Uh, the trade that still haunts all us Blackhawks fans to this day. Alex Vlasic will now be reminding of the uh, reminding us of that even more by wearing number 72 moving forward. Uh, next, we have Dylan Secura, who I also kind of forgot that the Blackhawks brought back this offseason, signed a one-year $750,000 deal. He is going to be wearing, he wore uh, 95, right? Am I capping on that? No, he wore 95. I think. Well, anyways, he's going to be changing his number this time around with the Blackhawks. He's going to be wearing number 79. And I can't remember if Curtis Gabriel wore 79 or 34 with the Blackhawks. I feel like he wore both, maybe one with Rockford, or maybe he wore 34 his first couple days up with the Blackhawks. I can't remember exactly, but Curtis Gabriel is the only other number 79 in Blackhawks history. 79 is kind of a very odd number to for hockey uh so yes Dylan Sakura, I, I guess decided to choose 79 for whatever reason uh and then last we have Andreas Athanasiu who I already mentioned also along with Max Domi signed a one-year three million dollar deal with the Blackhawks this offseason after his season last year with the Los Angeles Kings was shortened due to injury and some COVID issues but when he was healthy he was pretty productive and he was by far the most intriguing signing that the Blackhawks made to me this offseason because former 30 goal scorer, I don't know if he's ever going to be that again in all likelihood, probably not, but he is one of those guys who can be a game breaker with his speed and can give you, you know, a breakaway every other game and get those scoring opportunities because of the way he's able to wheel around the ice. So I really like the signing of Andreas Athen Athanasiu, even though he is ultimately going to be dealt at the deadline, I'm sure. Um, I, I still really like it because there's just this hope in the back of my mind that maybe he kills it because I really think he's going to get a top line opportunity for the Blackhawks. And if he kills it, I know that's more than likely going to mean the Blackhawks are going to capitalize and maximize on their return. But just the way he plays the game, especially with the speed, the Blackhawks have really missed that for the last handful of years. And I think he's going to be a very fun player for fans to watch. And I feel like they'll be able to, They'll, they'll be connected with him and enticed by him because he's able to provide that skill set that we haven't really seen much throughout the past few seasons. But anyways, Andreas Athanasio will officially be wearing number 89 for the Blackhawks this season. That is also the first 
uh, jersey number that will be worn in franchise history. No one has ever worn number 89, and potentially we could see 89 and 88 on the same line for the Blackhawks this season playing together. Again, I really do think, considering the roster makeup for the Blackhawks right now, Andreas Athanasiu is a shoe in to be top six, and I really think could be a staple on the top line, potentially with Jonathan Taves as the center as well. So we're going to have to obviously wait and see how it all shakes out during training camp and throughout the preseason and whatnot. But I'm really intrigued from the game that Andreas Athens you can provide. And heck, if, with that speed and playing with number 88, with the shot that he has too, it could be a, a, a lot of six. There could be a lot of success coming for number 89 this season. It's a really good opportunity for him. And if he does capitalize on it, like I said, the Blackhawks probably will be happy in the, up in their front office knowing that they're, they're going to be able to get a pretty good return for him uh, once the trade deadline rolls around. All right, folks, I think that is going to wrap up Wednesday, August 31st episode of Lockdown Blackhawks. Thank you all again for tuning into the show, and be sure to go and follow Lockdown Blackhawks right now wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube, and you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. And after the show, you got to be sure to go and check out the ultimate pro football preview for 2022. It's an eight-episode extravaganza to get you 100% ready for the NFL season. The local team of experts from the Lockdown Podcast Network, plus a betting angle from Lee Sterling of Lockdown Bets, all combining into one ultimate NFL season preview. Make sure to go and check it out for free wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, thank you all for tuning into today's episode. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you could also go and check out my strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And for any questions at all regarding anything related to the Blackhawks or to the show, feel free to email lockdownblackhawks at gmail.com. That's all one word. Or you can also hit me up on any one of my Twitter accounts at Jack Bushman2, at Talk and Hockey, at L O underscore Blackhawks. If you have a question about anything, you got plenty of places to hit me up. Don't hesitate to do so. So until tomorrow's episode, thank you all for tuning into the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.